Everyone's been hyping up Vaughn, but to be honest, the circumstances around his arrival are really, really different from that of Japan's release. With that being said, Pinello here is also part of the banner, but I suppose no one has ever hyped her up that much in the first place. Welcome back to another Should You Summon episode, where this time we're focusing on the Final Fantasy XII summon banner. Just in case you were wondering, I'm still a free-to-play player, so you can rest assured that I'm still making great life decisions. Before we get into this, let's reveal what I'll be covering. First, the unit's Trustmaster rewards and their Super Trustmaster rewards. Sure, getting 4 copies of a 5-star unit may seem difficult, but Super Trustmaster reward Moogle tickets are a thing. And, if anything, you'll get 100 of them eventually. Next, I'm going to look at the unit's relative strength as of this video's release. This means that I'll be seeing how they compare to other, more recent characters. Finally, I'll be looking at future units, those who will eventually enter the game and threaten to knock these featured units out of their Final Fantasy XII spotlight. Of course, if you only save for the next best thing, you may as well not spend any lapis at all. After that's done, I'll be giving my personal free-to-play opinion on this banner. One more thing, I won't be taking the time to talk in-depth about each unit. I've made review videos for each character, outlining their abilities and the proper rotation to maximize their damage, so check those out if you're interested. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about this banner. The three units on this banner are Seeker of Freedom Vaughn, Dancing Heart Pinello, and What's-His-Face. So obviously, I'm just gonna cover Vaughn and Pinello. OBJECTION! But sometimes the Trustmaster reward of the 4-star character might be worth getting, so I'll reveal them as well. First off, Seeker of Freedom Vaughn. His Trustmaster reward is a materia that gives your unit a 20% boost in physical evasion and raises their attack by a bit. While this does sound nice, you do have to realize that both aspects are a bit contradictory. After all, if you want to create a physical evasion provoke tank, there's not much reason to give them a lot of attack. But on the other hand, if you wanted for the attack boost, chances are that you have better materia available. But what if you don't have anything better in the first place? Decent evasion materia is relatively rare to begin with, so using a trust Mugo to get this isn't such a bad idea. His Super Trust Master reward, Durando, is an excellent sword. Not because of its stats, though admittedly it's rather decent, but because of its extra effects. A 30% increase to both evasion and passive provoke? That's an incredible boon to any prospective evasion provoke tank, which is a very important role in teams. Not only that, but it's also on a weapon, which doesn't tend to have bonus effects like these often. This will free up a slot for another piece of equipment, so you can throw something that might give your evasion provoke tank a bit more utility. What about his current strength? In terms of damage, it's, um, fine, but he only has one chaining attack and he's not very well suited to being a finisher. However, as a breaker, he rivals healing avatar Lid in terms of pure magnitude. Furthermore, as a main character, he'll instantly have access to his best breaks, so he's really well suited for completing content quickly. On the other hand, Lid might be a better breaker if you plan to drag a battle out. On another note, they have a lot of other differences that set them apart. For instance, Vaughn here has his evasion gimmick, while Lid can grant your entire team access to a triple cast absolute mirror of equity attack. All in all, it really depends on what you think you'll need. So, who in the future can threaten to overtake Vaughn? Well, there isn't any better 7-star breaker. But if we take a look into the distant, distant future of Neovisions, we can see that one of our older units, Lauren, will receive a Neovision form. As a breaker, the two are on the same level, actually. However, Lauren will have a far better time sustaining the breaks, and can bring along considerable amounts of damage on a level that Vaughn cannot match. On the other hand, she doesn't have his evasion gimmick, one of the most notable things that really separated Seeker of Freedom Vaughn from healing Avatar Lid. With that being said, realize that when I talk about Lauren, I'm talking about a whole new level of power with the introduction of a new unit rarity system. Freedom of Seeker Vaughn is still one of the best breakers. Dancing Heart Pinello's Trustmaster reward boosts magic by 40% and further boosts the unit's magic when they're holding a single weapon in both hands. This kind of effect is rather rare, and if you plan to use magic damage dealers that will only hold one weapon, 
there is no doubt that this Trustmaster reward will remain a staple of their equipment setup for a good amount of time. Her Super Trustmaster reward happens to be one of the highest magic boosting clothes equipment in the game. But it doesn't bring anything else to the table. And with the way power creep works, stat boosts are one of the most wasteful ways to devote your resources. So how does she measure up to other magic damage dealing units? Well, she pales in comparison to Umbro Dragon Darkfina, and is slightly around the level of Wildcard Ace and Benevolent Beauty Rem. She does, however, beat out 4 wins for Silas and damage, so there's that. All in all, she's effectively middle of the road when you're considering the best magic damage dealers. It's not exactly a boon when you're one of the newest release units. Since she does lose to Umbro Dragon Darkfina in pure damage, you can probably speculate that she'll be outclassed by Kuja as well. Kuja even shares fire elemental damage with her, which happens to be her forte, so there's not much reason to get her unless you plan to make use of her flexible Oreo raid damage instead. Now for the final unit, what's his face? Um, let's see, Rex? Is that how you pronounce it? Now, you might think that reviewing this one is a waste of time, but you never know if the Trustmaster reward is incredible enough that it's worth getting him by accident. So let's take a look. Galbana Lilies boosts Spear by 30 and has a bonus effect that restores 2000 HP and 20 MP for the caster every turn. That's uh, pretty bad. Especially when you consider that higher MP gauges will get better refos through small MP percentage passive restores anyways. The HP recovery is also rather pointless to chase. But what about Rex himself? So, despite being a physical damage dealer, I see that he has a cover ability. But it's pretty interesting. It protects against both physical and magic damage. Oh, but it's only for one ally. That's pretty gimmicky, and there's nothing in the game that requires something like this. Hmm, other than that, nothing really worth mentioning. Everything here will be inevitably outclassed by any recent 7-star unit. Even his limit burst isn't that good. So let's sum it all up. In contrast to the last video, two out of three Trustmaster rewards here are actually worth chasing, though it's going to be completely reliant on your current equipment and team setups. If you have better materia, or don't need these at all, then there's no reason to chase them. While I feel that most players wouldn't have better materia that's similar to these ones to begin with, it's not like I know what equipment each of you viewers have anyways, so it's going to be different for everyone. As for Super Trustmaster rewards, I absolutely recommend throwing a Super Trustmaster reward Moogle at Seeker or Freedom Vaughn. Physical evasion provoke tanks are often used in difficult content. While admittedly you don't need any specific unit to fulfill that row, I often use Warrior of Light Lena. You do need equipment that will make your units more likely to be targeted by an enemy attack. Since his Super Trustmaster reward raises both the evasion and provoke stat by 30%, it's extremely valuable for many units. Keep in mind that it is a sword not an accessory or a materia, so equipment placement may be a bit more restrictive. Still, that shouldn't be a significant problem. In terms of viability, Vaughn is so good that there won't be a better 7-star breaker unless Gumi decides to release a global original breaker for an anniversary celebration. Pinello is completely outclassed in damage by Umbro Dragon Darkfina, and while her damage is on par with units like Wildcard Ace and Benevolent Beauty Rem, it's not at a level as you might expect from a newly released unit. Personally, I'm not going to spend any lapis on this banner. That is, until I take a look at the 10,000 lapis 11 rainbow summon. If I end up getting Vaughn from there, I'll get his prism of the unit of choice tickets and throw the super trust master reward Mugo at him. If I don't end up getting Vaughn, I guess I'll have to subject myself to throwing rare tickets at this banner until I get him. If the unthinkable happens and I don't end up getting him through tickets, I guess I'll do that 25,000 lapis step up summon. But I really don't want to. Why can't I just get the units I want for free? Well, that does take out a bit of the fun, but it's such a miserable feeling when you end up summoning so many units that you don't need. Well, with that depressing spiel out of the way, thanks for watching. On another note, how did you do with Dark Visions? I ended up clearing all of the levels, and to be honest, I don't think getting Vaughn would actually improve my scores the next time around. We haven't received the Behemoth Trial, which was released around the same time as the Final Fantasy XII banner and was practically catered to showcasing Vaughn's skills. I guess it wasn't necessary, considering the fact that most players just saw the hype that surrounded him in Japan and didn't bother to look any further. 
Hmm. On that note, I might not even need to summon Bond, since I don't really have any troubles with any of the current content at all. That's definitely food for thought. If you like this video, make sure to give a like and subscribe. Comment below if you plan to summon from this banner, or if you plan to save for the 10,000 Lapis Rainbow banner first. Oh man, but what if you don't have enough Lapis for both the 10,000 Lapis banner and the 25,000 Step Up banner? That sounds like a video idea.